In early 2024, I already took a look at Starfield's performance on Linux and Windows. Linked in the video description to my blog back then, I discovered that when looking at the average FPS, Linux and Windows were pretty much evenly matched. Only when considering the 1% low values did Windows pull ahead, sometimes substantially. That was on a Ryzen 7600 and an AMD RX 7900 XT. Since I've recently seen on the Mortismal Gaming YouTube channel that there will most likely be a second Starfield DLC, I was curious if anything had changed performance wise since Linux has made quite a big step in the last year or so. And that's what this video is about. So let's get into the benchmarks. As a quick refresher, here are the results from early 2024 on the aforementioned hardware. Only Windows was capable of keeping the frame rate above 60 FPS at all times, and that was clearly reflected in the gameplay experience. Although Starfield's big city stuttered back then and still do now, it felt a lot better to play on Windows in harder to run locations, like Jemison's big city. Everything else was smooth on both systems. I tested on my AMD Ryzen 7800X3D with 32GB of DDR5 6000 megatransfers per second memory and an AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. Windows 11 was on version 24H2. My Linux installation was a Bazite 42 with KDE Plasma on Wayland running kernel version 6.59. I primarily tested at 1440p, but also took one measurement at 4K to investigate the theory. More on that in a moment. The graphic settings were set to ultra and high, which both enabled different levels of FSR upscaling. I also tested both presets with upscaling disabled, still using FSR 3. I ran every benchmark pass twice in one go instead of performing individual runs and averaging the numbers. It's a lot of data to gather, so I took some shortcuts to save some time. I revisited the exact locations as I did in 2024, but the results are obviously not comparable due to the hardware differences. However, I wanted some form of comparability. Additionally, the planets are somewhat randomized, so the location of Polvo will look different in the video footage, but it's mainly about the placement of objects. Landmarks are still in the same spot though. Starting with the default preset configurations at 1440p in New Atlantis, Windows takes the lead quite considerably at ultra quality. On average, the Penguin trails by 12 FPS. The gap closes to almost nothing at the high preset. It's also worth noting that the 1% low FPS are basically identical across both presets and operating systems. On the planet Polvo's surface, the results are a lot clearer in Windows' favor. While the perceived performance at ultra quality is absolutely negligible, Linux falls behind Microsoft's creation at the high preset. 16 FPS on average and 18 FPS at 1% lows. Will you feel that? Probably not. Both played exactly the same way. It's a measurable difference that goes beyond the margin of error though. Moving on to the native results, there's an average of about 10 FPS between Linux and Windows. The 1% lows are quite similar once again, although Windows is measurably faster by a few FPS. On Polvo, things get more interesting. The results are somehow flipped when compared to the default upscale preset. Now, the ultra preset shows a bigger difference, whereas the high preset causes both operating systems to move closer together. Starfield's performance profile is bizarre. Lastly, I ran one test at 4K native in New Atlantis. I was curious how much Linux and Windows would come together when I stressed the GPU as much as I could to take the load off the CPU. My assumption from previous tests was that when the CPU becomes the dominant factor, Windows pulls ahead of Linux. As you can see, my theory was correct, at least in Starfield in this very CPU heavy area. There's barely any difference at native 4K with the Ultra preset. Please note that my results are only representative of AMD GPUs. Using an NVIDIA graphics card might produce wildly different numbers. In summary, Windows leads Linux by around 7% on average in New Atlantis and 11% on the surface of Polvo. The 1% lows on New Atlantis were basically within the margins of error at 2%. On Polvo, however, the difference was 11%. Running the game at native resolution didn't change much. It was 9% and 4% in New Atlantis and 9% 10% on Polvo for the average and 1% lows. At 4K, the difference was below 1%. I also tested FSR 
4 via OptiScaler on Windows and the boost in image quality was enormous. You can see it in the B-roll footage on the screen right now. It's worth noting that I had to use XESS as inputs for OptiScaler. FSR 3 did not work. It's also essential that you do not select a low resolution scale. I only tested the ultra and high presets and on the high preset the game always crashed, as did FSR 3. I did not take a deep dive into this topic to find out the exact thresholds. My gut tells me that disabling dynamic resolution scaling and relying on the upscaling presets of XESS should do the trick. Oddly enough, FSR 3 does not have upscaling presets. One more comment on Starfield's performance in general. I recall the R5 7600 stuttering in New Atlantis, but using the 7800X3D did not resolve the issue at all. But it wasn't just the city, the planet Polvo was the same. There was a ton of frequent stuttering, so much so that one could mistake Starfield's tech for a poorly implemented Unreal Engine 5 game. When I ran the tests at 4K, the gameplay felt significantly better despite the lower frame rate. The CPU had substantially more time to perform all the loading and unloading of level sections, which considerably reduced the stuttering. And with that said, I'm at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider doing all the YouTube stuff, I would appreciate that. Thank you for watching.